white people catfish Dave here it is the spawn of the year for those that don't know what the spawn is that's when catfish go on the nest it becomes a much more difficult time to catch quality fish the fish you get are going to be scattered and are usually going to be smaller this time of year it happens every year and there's nothing we can do about it some youtubers fish for other species of fish I'll just keep right on catfishing and this would be a good time of year to talk about things and address other things besides just catching fish on video. The topic we'll address today is how to become successful on YouTube. Of course I am speaking of fishing channels. There's lots of ways to become successful on YouTube. I've done it with the fishing channel. If you want a successful fishing channel on YouTube, there's some things you're going to need to have. One is a good place to fish that can put you on preferably year-round content. I've seen some channels that take time off in the winter and do okay. The Hook, Line, and Chill channel has been doing that for years and they seem to be okay but as a general rule bad things can happen when you leave your audience for a while they can not forget about you while you're not putting out videos and other people are they will start searching other videos they may get attached to those people's videos and forget all about you so it is good to have year-round content I live in the very most upstream part of the Tennessee River and you can always fish year round here. Doesn't matter how bad it floods, doesn't matter how cold it gets, there's always somewhere you can put a boat in here and fish despite the conditions. People that live on the Mississippi, that's not so easy. It could be so flooded there, uh, it's just unfishable. It can completely ice over there. I've seen ice here, but the whole river never ices. It's usually backwaters. So we get year-round fishing, despite what Mother Nature throws at us. That is beneficial for me uploading year-round content. The second thing you need, you need to be an experienced fisherman. I see lots of guys uploading videos and their catch rates ain't always that great. I was already a fisherman long before I was a YouTuber. I fished this river for many years. I know the river, I know the fish. I know what to do in different situations, different seasons. So that will help you if you already know how to catch fish. Even though it is the spawn and it's a couple hours before dark before I even got down to the river, I'm gonna catch a fish or two in this video because I live in a good area. Getting a successful channel going in today's time is not easy. Back when guys like Steve Douglas, Fat Boy Dan were out putting videos, there weren't too many other people to watch on YouTube. They got all the air traffic if guys were wanting to watch a catfish type of video. There was lots of room for a few more guys to come in and get a lot of views and some of those did catfishing carp Chris Flores muddy river catfishing it was easy for those guys to get over a hundred thousand subs back then and get a lot of views in today's time there are thousands of already established fishing channels probably thousands of catfish channels alone Anybody with a cell phone, an internet, and a fishing pole has got their own YouTube channel. Very few will ever be able to make a living at it. If you are going to be successful, you need all the key factors I've mentioned so far. But probably the number one most important factor in you becoming successful on YouTube is your personality. Are you someone that people can watch? Are you someone people will like? 
Are you someone that maybe people will dislike so much that they still watch your videos? I think I get a little of both. Either way, people need a reason to watch your videos besides just a fish being landed. There are thousands of channels landing fish on YouTube. You need something that captures their attention and that number one key factor is going to be your personality. What you say on there, how you act on there, you ain't got no personality, this is a no-go for you. A lot of people made it because they had some kind of niche. We got one guy around here that got into it when kayak fishing started getting real popular. He was one of the first ones to watch when everybody started buying all those kayaks. He started getting a lot of attention. Since then, there are hundreds of kayak YouTubers out there trying to follow in his footsteps. He got in early and he had a niche that was able to draw the masses to him. For some people, maybe their personality isn't that great. Maybe they know how to catch fish, but their niche is putting their wife or their girlfriend in the videos wearing a bikini. It works for a lot of them. It would never work for me. I look terrible wearing a bikini. Once you get content, once you decide you have a personality or a girlfriend or wife that's willing to wear a bikini in a video, you need to upload that content. The number one key in your video getting watched to begin with is the title and the thumbnail, which is the picture you see when you first click on that video. It is not good to be deceiving in these thumbnails because while that one video may get initial views, when you upload another one, they're going to be like, oh yeah, I remember that guy. You lose trust with your viewers as soon as you start putting titles that are very misleading. As far as the thumbnail, that's the picture you show. Uh, that is so key. The combination of that and the title. For a long time, uh, I didn't even really take YouTube that serious. It was my personality that got me through because in a lot of my thumbnails, I made the biggest mistake you could make as a fishing YouTuber. Now this ain't always the case, but it is the case 99% of the time, and that is to show a picture of the fish you caught. If you're gonna hold that biggest fish up for the thumbnail of that video, people already know what you caught. They don't need to click on that video. They seen what you caught. They look down there, this video is 45 minutes long, 20 minutes long, I'm gonna have to scroll through all this just to find where he catches that and I already know what he caught. I guess it's good to have some suspense in there. And that's why, if I really want my video to do well, I will simply take a picture of the water. Another one that works great is a rod just bent down in the water. It makes them wonder what's at the end of that bent rod. My most successful video, I took one of these real colorful rods. I believe it was one of those green mad cats. It popped, you know, and the picture of that rod bent down, that color popping between that, the title, it hit two million views. Now here again, it's not always the case. I think I seen a, a Thai pig patrol video and it just showed this bass. Picture of this bass, some bass caught in some pond, blah, blah, blah. And I looked down and that thing had 700,000 views, you know. That might work for bass, but with these catfish, don't show that fish if you want to get a lot of views. To these guys that gets their wives in the bikinis. Those kind of thumbnails have traditionally gotten lots of views. The problem with that now is that is becoming so saturated, people don't know which bikini they're gonna click on anymore. 
So here again, the whole saturation of YouTube, all these content creators out there, makes it difficult for a new guy to come aboard and have success. There is one channel, I won't mention no names, he's been at it for a few years, and he's achieved, you know, oh, at this point, maybe 15,000 subs. But that is an extremely low number of subs, subscribers, for the amount of views he has gotten on some of his videos. How does he get those views? He's a master of putting the right thumbnail, and his biggest problem is over-exaggerating the title. Either way, he makes videos that get people to click, but when you've got 6 million total views on your channel, and only 15,000 of that 6 million actually subscribed, that's telling you what they thought about your actual content. You were a master at getting them to click. Did you provide what the title said? Sometimes he does, but the problem is he has misled people so many times, a lot of those people go, oh yeah, that's him again. So that's the reason he only has 15,000 subs, but yet got over 6 million views on his channel. I had 10,000 subs within my first year. I was fishing off the bank, public parks. It was my personality and my content that got them to actually hit the subscribe button. You need to be real in this business, or you need to be so fake that you seem real. People need to be able to connect with you if they're going to want to watch numbers of your videos. There are lots of issues that YouTubers face, like the sun being in the camera. Seems like that's always the case when I fish. Too much background noise, barking dogs, lawn mowers, leaf blowers, chainsaws, cars, just whatever. Finding the optimum weather to film Fish can bite in all weather, but is that the best weather to film in? If all you're seeing is dark and raindrops all over the lens in a blurry picture, that's not a quality video. It's not enjoyable to watch. Seeing something so blurry you can barely make out what it is through those raindrops all over the lens. I don't even use a waterproof camera because I just don't film in the rain. It doesn't produce great video. There are some cons to getting in this business. If you make it, some of these guys live right on the water. They can fish 50 hours a week. Easy for them to get content. They don't put much wear and tear on their vehicles, and uh, it's just easy. I drive an average of 60 miles one way, so I'm gonna have at least two hours driving in the day, which is time taken from the day. Besides your actual fishing time that you took, and then there's the editing time. So this takes a lot of time. I have about destroyed three vehicles doing this, living so far away. My money's been pretty good, but how much am I really coming out ahead destroying three vehicles? I'm having fun. I do things when I want to. I eat what I want when I want. Nobody tells me to get out of bed. So I guess that's worth destroying three vehicles. There is a lot of time invested in this. Until you get to my level, you're going to have to have another source of income, meaning you're going to have to put time there, which will take away from your YouTube time. If you're a working guy trying to get into this, that can be an obstacle. If you're one of these guys that gets a check for being disabled and you can fish all the time, you make it big on YouTube, they see you on that boat lifting those heavy fish, they're going to say, hey, he don't need this disability check. I know one YouTuber that happened to. He no longer makes videos. He had to go get a job again. If you do make it to my level, you're gonna get a lot of uh, drama, especially if you're on any kind of social media, fishing groups, friends with other YouTubers that are trying to make it too. When you rise way above them, you'll find out they no longer like you. You'll get all these trolls, people thumbs down in your videos, 
leaving comments to try to discourage you, but you just have to look at the bright side, which is 99% of your comments will either be neutral or with positive intent. So there's a few idiots, but you just have to look at the big picture. Keep pressing on. That fish got to pecking and banging at my baits, and he got the bait off, but he also got himself snagged. Oh, slimy things. Man, this time of year, they are slimy. Being in this business, uh, it can be a little nerve-wracking. You've got what you call YouTube Studio, which shows you what you're making, what your videos are making. And it's this up and down like the stock market. When it's up, you're on cloud nine. When it's falling, you're wondering just how far it's going to fall, because that's your money. You've made this a job. The biggest illusion these guys get is they'll get one really big video, and that will really add to your numbers. That's going to add to your subscribers. If you're putting out decent content, you're going to watch your subscriber rate go up you're going to watch your money soar. But you get this false illusion that that's how much money you're really making. And uh, you are really making it, but you're only really making it because of that one big video that you popped. So you go buying this and buying this, and you go adjusted to making this much a month because that's how much you're making. And that video eventually fizzles out and then you see the reality of what your channel is really making. And all of a sudden your income can drop to half of what it was uh, six months ago. So, you know, you're always under the stress to put out big videos. The problem with getting these big videos is due to the saturation of YouTube in general. Just so many content creators out there even if you catch a monster fish see what I'm talking about the noise even if you catch the monster fish which can be rare in the waters you live you put the perfect title to it you put the perfect thumbnail on it and the reality is this, your video may never get shown to the masses. Only your subscribers may know about it. And here is the grim reality to that. Supposedly your subscribers get notified every time you upload. Oh no, they don't. Maybe that's the way it was in the earlier days. But I've talked to quite a few guys. And it's happened to me. I have... Subscribers tell me they are not being notified when I upload a video. The only reason I am getting views is because they just went on my channel and looked down on the videos. Ah, there's a video. So it's because of my diehard followers from putting out content they liked that got me any views at all on what I thought was going to be a great video. It never got shown. And you can look, it, it'll show you your analytics, it'll say stuff like your regular viewers are watching less or your regular viewers are watching more, but what it needs to say is your video is appealing to a wider audience than usual. Uh, fact is this, there's literally thousands of videos a day being uploaded. So how can YouTube suggest all those videos they can't it's too saturated so the grim reality is if you use the perfect formula 
of great content, the perfect thumbnail, the perfect title, your video still might not get that many views. We've tried to study this thing, analyze this thing, find out the some sort of system to it, and there isn't. So it's kind of like uh, a crapshoot. You're just we're playing the lotto. You put it out there. You hope it gets pushed. Earlier in the spring, my channel got pushed for some reason out of the blue, and uh, I made a lot of money last month. I have started another channel guy around here floating in the kayak he started another channel but the reason those channels got started for one is you hear of all this stuff you hear of channels getting demonetized out of the blue hook line and chill got demonetized you can't find any rhyme or reason why well it's because those girls that spin over man there's girls all over getting millions of views bent over and really barely nothing at all and they're not getting cut off so why did they really get cut off and I've heard of other people getting cut off, guys that were really big, guys that were uh, probably making millions of dollars on YouTube, just getting demonetized overnight. I'm like, man, what a shock that would be. So I have started another channel as a backup plan and also to experiment with the algorithm. Does that channel have a better algorithm than what mine does? Will it get pushed more if I put a fancy... Uh, title on there, you know. So it's an experimental stage. It's a backup plan in case anything were to happen. But yeah, it this is a job. It becomes your life. It becomes just as stressful as a job. more content fish content the butt is hanging out on this one and its belly is blown up it is probably a post spawn fish that is feeding on mussels their guts will start coming out because they start getting rid of those mussel shells and I guess it tears them up see there blown up butthole coming out if my butthole was coming out, I'd quit eating the stuff. Nobody said fish were smart. More content. You gotta have that content. Skipjack heads are the only baits getting hit on the skipjack. They're not touching those center cuts. Another typical spawn size catfish. But yeah, this can be a stressful business. It is your money. It is your livelihood. Be trying to talk on video and got some dag blasted siren in the background making racket during your video. The lifestyle, it can be good. It can offer opportunities that you didn't have before. It can put you in situations with people, uh, business situations. I get offered uh, to stay at places all over America. I could go to these rivers, fish, uh, stay at their houses, not have to pay for motel. I choose not to do that. Could have free stuff coming in the mail all day long. I choose not to do that. I choose not to get too personal with the crowd. 
Uh, I've got one guy, old cousin Delbert. He got my address somehow, and he's been uh, sending me stuff ever since. Some of it I use. I got old uh, cousin Delbert Hook on that right rod over there. You don't have to be a people person to do this. You just have to be good on the camera. I am not a people person. I make my living doing this. I don't even look good in a bikini. To be really big in this game, you have to appeal to the masses. I appear to enough to earn me a decent living. I would never suggest fishing strictly for catfish if you're wanting over a million subscribers. I release all my fish. I've had people get mad at me. I've had people unsubscribe from me. I could be feeding the poor, all kind of stuff because I release my fish. A lot of these guys, uh, they got all these catch and cook videos, you know. They're eating the fish. People want to see you eat these fish. Uh, you know, you're appealing to the stomach. People like to eat, you know. You got bikinis on the video, you're appealing to the eyes. You know. If you can be funny or entertaining, well, now you're appealing to people's souls, you know. I appeal to conservative minded fishermen that appreciate catch and release, especially of the trophy fish, and even a few women out there. You have to keep your calm and your composure when you got some jet ski riding right beside you doing circles or a wake boat. There's been many times I've almost lost my composure over that. I could have made more money if I sold merchandise, hats, shirts, uh, got endorsed by some of these people. I've had a lot of people try to send me free gear to endorse this, done that. I've done Mad Cat rods for a while. I got out of that, and it was nothing to do with the owner of Mad Cats. It was simply, it was this public crowd uh, was acting like a bunch of kids on the social media. I didn't want no part of it. I went back to the Berkeley E-Cats, and for anybody wondering, they are no longer made. I've got the last ones they had, so uh, that's it. I'll be looking into some new rods here later this summer, because those will eventually wear out. But yeah, you can get free gear. I've got a lot of free gear uh, doing this stuff, you know, free clothes. And have been offered a lot more, I just didn't take it. You can go far in this business because of the public outreach that you have. Steve Douglas, uh, you know, when all the competition came in and he was no longer the number one guy on YouTube, he had a business mind. He started marketing his own stuff, Monster Rod Holders and uh, the products from that. Started a catfish convention up in Kentucky. Uh, he was able to use his YouTube power to endorse all that stuff and it became much bigger than any YouTube money that he could have made catching catfish. So uh, you get a lot of possibilities doing this. Us YouTubers, we have selling power. I could use that selling power to sell my own stuff if I wanted to. I prefer just to catch a few fish and eat a sandwich. Richard Jean uh, he's a good example of a guy that knows how to be successful on YouTube. He's fishing for multiple species, which reaches a farther audience. You know, you're, you're no longer having just catfish. You've got crappie, whatever else he's fishing for. So he can reach more people. He's an older fella. He's not going to look good in a bikini either. But he has a personality all to his own on camera. He adds humor. He adds a lot of good messages to his videos. Just him talking on camera, he can produce good content for video. He's an excellent example of somebody that can be successful without using their wife to wear a bikini. My suggestion is, if you don't know where to start, pick the most successful YouTubers out there and watch their show see what they do, see what they say, check out their content. I don't watch nobody other than Little Red Hidey Hood every now and then.
She doesn't do a whole lot of fishing shows, but she looks good in a bikini. Skinny post spawn fish right there. That thing looks like a string bean. That's an example of a fish that's come off the nest. Extremely skinny, marked up across his body. Even the whiskers have been rubbed off from all that abrasion from whatever they do on the nest. That thing needs to eat. It's a good sign. It lets me know that some fish are coming off the nest which will produce more content for my videos. Right now it's a bit of a struggle. As far as discouraging people from trying this, uh, there's been a number of channels that started after me and have passed my channel. There's always room for somebody and you're gonna have to have that special knack. The combination of good commentary, personality, with the proper title and thumbnail, the ability to come up with content on a weekly basis, and the pure desire to keep it happening and make it all happen. It can be done. It can be a lot of fun. Looks like he got in my other line. Another fish joined in the video. You've got these groups of small YouTubers out there and they're watching each other. They're commenting on each other's videos and they're always doing the sub for sub stuff. They'll message you, hey, I'll sub you if you sub me back, or I subbed you, will you sub me back? And I was told early on YouTube frowns on the sub for sub stuff. They know how to figure out that's what's going on. And the few hundred YouTubers that you've got watching you are never going to put you at this level. You're in your own world out here. It's your own game. And, uh... These guys that do these collab videos with these big YouTubers and they think it's going to get them a lot of subscribers, it don't work. I know one guy, I ain't going to say who he is, been on a, a big channel four or five times and uh, his subscribers didn't hardly go up any, you know. Those people might have checked him out since he got seen on that other channel. But their final thoughts in their mind are the same as what got everybody else to not subscribe to his channel. It's still the same content. They looked, who's this guy? Oh, I don't want to subscribe to that. That doesn't help you either. That will only help you if when they look at you, you've got great content, you've got that personality, you've got all things rolling. That's the only way that will help you. If you're one of these guys that isn't making it, getting on a bigger guy's channel, kissing some other big YouTubers butt in live streams or whatever, 
is not going to make your channel go anywhere. There are so many channels out there getting shouted out, blah, blah, blah. That's not where it's at. That ain't going to help you. You got to take this on as it's you out here, not you and your buddies. Because your buddies can't come with you. And when you start leaving them, they're not going to be your buddies no more anyway. Good luck to everyone trying this stuff. It's stressful, but I enjoy it. I got up this morning about 10.30, done me some exercise, went to the store, got down here about 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock this evening, and put out a fishing video. If you can get here, it's an easy life. There's people that learn to play guitar, and then there's natural guitar players. There's people that learn to fight, and then there's natural born fighters. And I think a lot of that is the same in this business. You're either a natural or you're not. Either way, if you are a natural, maybe some of the things I said can help you in your videos and you can achieve your goals even faster. And if you're just a mediocre channel, uh, it can still increase your views and uh, might earn you some money along the way. So. I knew it was the spawn, I knew it was a tough time to fish, so I just come out here for a couple hours, thought of an important subject to talk about, and then I had content for this video. I knew I wouldn't get no views if I wore a bikini. This is a video, there was fish in the video, that makes it a fishing video. This is Catfish Day with another one, signing out.